This is Doofy McBear Scotch, and we're back to Anthony Hopkins. Now let's do Silence of the Lambs. Well, to the best of my ability, I cannot remember any lambs in this whole movie. There might be ones in there. I'm not going to say I'm 100% sure. If you watch every single second of it, there might be a lamb, but I didn't see him. And there were... I don't think silence was very emphasized either. I mean, the, it was a poor, fairly normal amount of silence. I mean, when people weren't supposed to be talking, they weren't. So, if you're here to see some silence or lambs, you're sadly going to be disappointed. But what is it really about? Well, as you can see, it's a movie about Dr. Hannibal Lecter, which means it's about a cannibalistic psychopath, which is played by Anthony Hopkins. And this is one of his breakout roles. He's had movies before this, but it was only A Bridge Too Far, which was a suck movie. From You can research my review on that one by watching the Michael Caine thing, but yeah, Silence of the Lambs was his breakout movie that made him into a star. Hannibal Lecter made him into a household name. It was a really good movie. It had Jodie Foster in it. Very good plot. Uh, Hannibal Lecter was helping Clarence Starling, who is played by Jodie Foster, to catch another killer in the act. Which is unique, getting help from one serial killer to catch another serial killer. There, there, at that point in time, there was not a lot of that going on. And there's not a lot of people that imitate it because they know it's been done before. So, this is a real good movie. So, let's see, it's not the kind of movie you'd watch over and over again, but it is a very good movie. And I recommend it. Mask of Zorro, we already did that. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, I've seen... There are a fuck ton of vampire movies that are on the market these days, and this is not the best one. There are so much better vampire movies than this one. I mean, it was good for its time, but nowadays there are just so many good vampire movies. I'd... I mean, you've got the original Dracula movie, you've got the Blade movies, and you've got a shit ton of other vampire movies, and this is not the best one. It's boring. Keanu Reeves is the main character, and he plays a really drab guy. It's like it's kind of like if you ever watched Star Wars and you watched Hay Hayden Christensen's acting, it's kind of like that. He doesn't say... This is how he says, I love you. I love you. It's not convincing. He doesn't have any passion in it. This is still when Keanu Reeves was a terrible actor. So, this isn't a highly recommended one. It's really boring. It's just not my style anymore. It's just not... I don't recommend it. It's not a terrible movie. There are so much more terrible movies out there, but... This is not among the best of vampire movies, so I wouldn't recommend it. We've already did Red Dragon, Legends of the Fall. Now, this one's a drama movie. It, the main character, I believe, is Brad Pitt. I'm not certain. He may or may not be in the movie. It gets to the point where you just assume Brad Pitt is in a drama because that's all he fucking does these days. Boring, but yeah, oh well. It's it's your typical run-of-the-mill drama. There's some cheating involved. It's not really the best. It probably got nominated for an Academy Award, which is what a lot of terrible movies get, which is hardly an award, but it's it's just not really the best. It's just blah. That's what I'd say. If I had to, uh, like, describe the whole movie in one word, I'd say blah. That's all. I, that's what I'd categorize it as. But anyway, we've said enough about that. Meet Joe Black. It also has Brad Pitt. I'm not sure if he was in that other one yet. 
but we're we think he is, but we're not sure. Brad Pitt is definitely in Meet Joe Black. He's the main character. And Anthony, Anthony Hopkins is the secondary character in this one. Uh, Joe Black uh, is kind of a really complicated uh, Reaper story where Brad Pitt might try to kill someone or maybe not it's it's really complicated to explain the whole damn thing it's decent it's better than legends of the fall so if your standards are that high i guess this is a movie to watch but i i watched it a while ago it was complicated and i didn't really get it that much so i can't really say that much about it we did amistad already and of course we did a bridge too far unfortunately and then finally, Instinct. This one's about monkeys. And Anthony Hopkins plays a crazy man. But he's not Hannibal Lecter in this one. He's some other dude. Ethan Powell. He, uh, he's the crazy man that researches a whole bunch of apes. He starts talking their language and starts thinking he's one of them. And then Cuba Gooden Jr., comes in to save the day and tries to make old Mr. Hopkins into a sane man again and it's uh, it's one of those stories it's about a crazy person so if you wanna watch a movie where Anthony is acting crazy go for it it's decent that's what I'll say about it instant what do we think of Anthony Hopkins as an actor well he is superb at playing Hannibal Lecter but he's not really the greatest when he plays any other role. I mean, when he plays any other role, he's just kind of... Anthony Hopkins being Anthony Hopkins. But when he's Hannibal Lecter, it's like... <laughs> ah, that doesn't work. I can't do the, that, that sound, but I gave it a shot. That was my pathetic attempt at a Hannibal Lecter impersonation after he says Fubba Beans. But yeah, as Hannibal Lecter, he's off the charts, but when he plays any other role, he's just kind of... He's Anthony Hopkins when he's not playing Hannibal Lecter, so there you go. I mean, I don't hate the guy, I don't necessarily love the guy either, he's just kind of Anthony Hopkins. Moving on to Bob Hoskins. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Well, who framed him? I, well, it was Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd is who framed Roger Rabbit. Next movie. Nope, we'll do more of an elaborate thing than there. Oh, I think we're about to run out of time. Goodness gracious. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Can we review it quickly? Well, Roger Rabbit is a cartoon character, and this is one of the unique movies that combines live action with cartoon elements. This was before Space Jam, so I think that was personally a little bit better. They were both pretty good. It brings uh, all the characters from the classic cartoons. You've got Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse. It brings all those characters together in a really, really superb movie. I really liked it a lot. I watched it a little bit too young because the final scene where Christopher Lloyd melts is really, really fucking creepy. And when you're a little kid and you watch that, it scares the shit out of you because it scared the shit out of me. But it looks like we're running out of time, so we'll talk about it later. So, see ya.